मैं तो दिल्ली यार दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, health protection measures remain, warns Minister. Fijians show joy at elimination of COVID-19 cases, and fire leaves four families homeless. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. All the health safety measures relating to the coronavirus are still in place, warns Health Minister Dr. Firemi Wanganabete. Fiji was declared COVID-19 free yesterday, but the minister stresses that Fijians should not become complacent and must continue to observe personal and hand hygiene and maintain physical distancing at all times. Pranita Prakash reports. While new health protection measures will be announced next week, Fijians are being urged to remain alert. We have to be mindful of the fact that all around the world COVID-19 still is prevalent and because of that uh, uh, we have to make sure that uh, you know, we continue with all those uh, guidelines that we have in place and that doesn't change. The minister says over 100 Fijians who've returned home to be reunited with their families remain in their mandatory closely monitored hotel quarantine. The processes around them in terms of uh, the 14 days plus testing and then if they're negative then they go home that process still remains more than 2000 covid 19 tests have been conducted and around 92 percent of fiji's population have been screened at the fever clinics pranita prakash fbc news the news that our last active COVID-19 patients had been released has brought relief among Fijians. In the capital city today, people were shopping with some ease. However, many say the restrictions in place due to the virus has taught them many lessons. San Anian Boiler reports. It's the first Saturday after Fiji is declared COVID-19 free, a news widely welcomed by Fijians. We are so happy and fortunate that the three is now free from the disease and that Fiji is now free from the virus. However, it's crucial to always be vigilant. When we have cases of COVID-19, we are always worried, coming to sell in the market and having frequent contact with customers. But now we are so blessed to be free from the disease. Market vendor Devanand Prakash says life can go back to normal for many of them. Uh, well, it feels good uh, for us, like uh, we are free from the COVID now. And uh, like uh, previous, compared to previous months, like uh, we are big depression because the families were in big depression, no money, nothing at all to move on. No? If a family catches a virus, it's a bit difficult for us, for a family to go back in there and stay in there. House, you know? So now it's really, really, really good. However, many Fijians say COVID-19 is a game changer and the health protection measures must still be observed. We still have to keep washing our hands and uh, keep practicing the two meters social distancing and the social gathering of uh, below 20. So I'm just hoping for the best for other people as well as me. So we're going to get back to normal and even our tourism industry, everything. Just hoping for the best. I think uh, for this uh, hygiene and um, washing your hands after everything, in everything you do, it's, yeah, I think for this hygiene thing, we should continue. Fiji registered its first COVID-19 case on March 19th, and with the clearing of the last three patients yesterday, Fiji became only the 13th country in the world to become virus-free. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. There is renewed anger in the United States as evidence mounts of police brutality. More videos have emerged showing police violently lashing out at demonstrators on involving a 75-year-old man that led to officers being suspended, has in turn seen more than 50 other officers resign in protest. Four families are homeless after a fire in Lumi Road, Nandawa, Nasino destroyed three properties late yesterday afternoon. The fire is believed to have started at around 5.30 p.m. from one of the flats' kitchen and quickly spread to the adjacent flats. Pranita Prakash reports. It took firefighters more than three hours to control the blaze which is believed to have started from this flat. The 33-year-old homeowner was inside his flat with his two children, aged 10 and one and a half years. His mother-in-law, Vishal Devi, says she got a call from one of the neighbors in the evening that her daughter's house was on fire. He said the house has been burned down. 
And I asked him, how did anyone get hurt? So he said, I, I actually don't know, but yeah, the house is all in ashes. Eh? Devi says the family was not able to save anything. All in ashes, nothing. Only they are in one clothes. But like uh, at the moment, families, they bring some clothes, eh? milk, diaper. An eyewitness told FBC News that few neighbors assisted the families to escape from the burning houses. According to eyewitnesses, two families were not able to save anything, while the other two were able to save some of their household items. The second flat also had four family members, while the third flat housed an extended family with ten members. Only the 33-year-old men sustained minor injuries, while others escaped unharmed. Police have cordoned off the area as investigation continues. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. A woman in her 20s died following an accident at a resort in Taviuni yesterday. The victim was riding an electric cart with three others when the driver allegedly lost control, causing it to tumble down a slope. Police say the victim was trapped underneath the cart and was pronounced dead upon arrival at the Taviuni hospital. The driver was medically evacuated to the Nalsori hospital where he remains admitted. The other two passengers were treated and sent home. Investigation continues. Up ahead, local special aims to boost tourism activity and Sky Pacific records decline in subscription. Radio Fiji One, Now more than ever, humanitarian aid agencies need funding to assist vulnerable countries like Fiji, reeling from the impacts of Tropical Cyclone Harold and the coronavirus. Refugees International believes agencies like the Food and Agriculture Organization and UNICEF have stretched their budget and donor agencies are not bridging the gap due to the deep economic recession brought by COVID-19. In its report titled, A New Vulnerability, COVID-19 and Tropical Cyclone Harold Create the Perfect Storm in the Pacific, Refugees International says small Pacific Island countries are battling two different crises, which requires separate solutions. The report suggests the donor states must ensure that the response to COVID-19 does not come at the expense of humanitarian aid for those impacted by TC Herald. It's not just enough um, to be able to give money to prevent the spread of COVID-19, uh, but it's also essential that um, things like food rations are provided, uh, especially in the case of Fiji, where a good chunk of ag agricultural land has been ravaged by Cyclone Herald. Um, and funding for food security in particular will be very important going into the future. Oba says requests for funding by a number of UN agencies, including the FAO and UNICEF, have not been fulfilled. The reality is it's very important these sorts of organizations receive adequate funding. What they're asking for is not a lot. For instance, the FAO has requested $3 million and UNICEF has requested $7 million. Uh, at present, only tw less than 25% of requested funds have been delivered. She says Fijians living and working overseas are important lifelines for their families, but due to the pandemic, they are unable to provide financial assistance. Unfortunately, in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, many of them have become un unemployed or underemployed, and they're not able to send life-saving remittances to their families back home. Um, and as such, it's now more important than ever that the international community step up in order to bridge that gap. Oba also suggests that apart from fully funding the humanitarian assistance, donor states can provide debt relief to Fiji. Places like Fiji, in particular, um, are having to deal with more than just disasters such as Cyclone Herald uh, and displacement outcomes. They also have to deal with a long-term recession. Um, because COVID-19 has made it impossible for one of the greatest contributors to their economy, tourism, to continue. The report also highlights that efforts to address COVID-19 should not diminish the importance of efforts to address disaster risk reduction, especially since climate change will intensify cyclones moving forward. Ritika Pratap, FBC News.
A new campaign has been launched to build consumer confidence and ignite economic activity in the tourism sector. Tourism Fiji has partnered with numerous operators for Love Our Locals campaign, offering discounted rates to Fijians in order to generate revenue and eventually get people back on the job. Domestic tourism is not new and Fijians are being urged to band together to get not just tourism but the whole country out of the economic turmoil. As we Fijians uh, start taking part in tourism, we're supporting not just our local hotels but Fijians associated with the industry. The staff of the hotel, the farmers who supply the hotels, the handicraft sellers and of course they're actually keeping businesses open and running. Fiji cleared its last active COVID-19 patients yesterday, recording a 100% recovery rate. Koya says by traveling domestically, we will be able to boost the confidence of our international partners that Fiji is safe and ready to welcome them. As they say, uh, the trust is actually the new currency of the new norm. And to build and maintain that trust, we have developed uh, also a set of COVID uh, guidelines to help the industry uh, adopt to this new norm. A Facebook page called Love Our Locals Fiji will be used to promote discounted hotel rates as well as related services and activities. Trying to work with some uh, uh, media partners to get media partnerships out there to be able to try and get um, more exposure to, for all Fijians to get to know this message and, and support local communities. The ministry highlighted that Fijians need to be the biggest advocates of our tourism industry and this is an opportune time for us to show support. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Small tourism operators are looking at other alternatives to sustain themselves during the downturn period. One of them is the Joyce Aviation Group, who operate heli tours and tandem skydive. Today, the Nandi-based company shifted its focus to Suva, offering discounted rates to the locals. Venina Rakautonga caught up with them and filed this report. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for these people who got a chance to experience Suva from a bird's eye view. We decided to make a a weekend of it, mm -hmm. um, bring the aircraft over, offer people um, short scenic flights over Suva that they wouldn't be able to afford otherwise, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also give them uh, uh, a little bit of exposure. The company, which is heavily reliant on international tourists, has turned its focus to locals due to a downturn. So we were probably one of the first companies majorly affected by it, because although the Chinese are only about 10% of total tourists in Fiji, being 85% of ours was a, was a massive impact. Lifelight Fiji, who works closely with Joyce Aviation Group, was also providing insights on their services. We're looking at strengthening these services because it's important that every Fijian has access to good health care. Joyce Aviation Group are also owners of Pacific Flying School, Sunflower Aviation and Adventure Sailing based in Nandi. Benina Rakautonga, FPC News. The Environment Ministry has launched its first nature-based solution complex in Luvuluvu, now Sori. Minister Dr. Mahindra Reddy says this will prevent erosion from riverbanks and protect food sources and natural habitats of the wildlife. Dr. Reddy says river erosion has been an issue in most areas. The complex is funded by the Korean government. These nature-based solutions that we have built will buttress the riverbank protection resilience of hundreds of communities around Fiji. Ladies and gentlemen, for problems arising out of nature, problems caused by nature, problems contributed by nature, we need to develop a response using nature as the solution. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.
The Fiji Mbati players showed their class in round four of the NRL matches last night. Suliasi Vunivalu, Viliami Kikau and Apisai Kuroisau were in blistering form as the Melbourne Storm and Penrith Panthers recorded wins in their respective matches. Flying Fijians utility Josh Matavesi will commit to Bath rugby for the next two seasons. The Fiji Football Association has put the players' welfare at the top of its agenda and will soon start a Football for Humanity Foundation. This foundation will look after the players in times of natural disasters affecting football in Fiji. This was passed in the Fiji FA Board of Control meeting today. Patel says Fiji FA has applied for the OFC funding and are now awaiting for funds to come through. We will be distributing almost 60,000 Fijian dollars, uh, uh, 68,000 Fijian dollars worth of uh, food and hygiene packs and everything to all the players and those are affected. And then there will be some monetary funds given to the players to, that have lost their income and everything. Meanwhile, the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants will be played in Lautoka and the court's IDC will be held in Suva. Patel says they are planning to take the Vodafone Fiji fact to Sabrell Park in Lombasa. Weightlifting Fiji will be focusing on developing grassroots programs under the new president's leadership. Della Shaw Elder aims to elevate the standard of the sport locally. Dale Matarakula with the story. Fiji weightlifting is now going back to the basics. Our focus right now is just uh, grassroots and, and local training and also with that high performance center. We would like to... Uh, we would like to strengthen that before we go back into uh, looking at another international coach. Elder says she wants to work at HPU Center in Levuka to complete soon. At the moment we have a incomplete center that is currently under, renova uh, under uh, renovation in Levuka. That is the uh, Levuka Satellite Center. Uh, and, uh, and we are also going to be working with uh, the one here in Suva. Secretary General Josiah Tuinamata says Fiji weightlifting will also need to adapt to the new norm. We just finished our accreditation system in place for the new normal for the COVID-19. Uh, this will include uh, all the protocols in place when we will start our trainings again. <clears throat> And I think it's a way forward for weightlifting Fiji. The appointment of Shaw Elder signals the strong continued commitment to growing gender equality and female participation in the sport. This is also an important aspect of striving to make the sport bigger and better locally and internationally. Tali Terukula, FBC Sports. Blitzmaster Prashant Saroop won all his games last weekend to add 7 from 7 to Fiji Wise's final score, pushing the team to first place in a double victory in the Junior Online Chess Championship. Saroop finished at the tournament's top scorer in a field of 36 participants, where fellow teammates Tayone Sikivo scored 5 from 7, while Avinesh Nandan and Goru Avind scored 4 out of 7. Their Cumulative score spiked Fiji to number one position with 20 points ahead of Hanon Zhu of New Zealand, who had 18 points. The third position was held by Joe Leong of Australia, who amassed 13 points. And whether it was a weak trough of low pressure with associated cloud and showers affecting the northern, eastern and interior of the larger islands. Meanwhile, an east to southeast wind flow prevails over the country. Taking a look at the weather map in the west, humid conditions with occasional rain and thunderstorm. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy and humid with overcast conditions. Showers were experienced from late afternoon. Now up north, a gloomy day, evening showers expected or thunderstorm in some spots. At sea, it's moderate to fresh east to southeast winds, moderate to rough seas. And turning to the tides, low tide at 12.39 tomorrow morning with high tide at 7.14 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.33 a.m. Now for tomorrow, occasional showers with isolated thunderstorms and heavy falls expected. Localized heavy falls may lead to flash flooding of low-lying areas. Tomorrow's temps will range between 29 and 31 degrees. And our further outlook, we're looking further on to Monday. Mostly cloudy conditions to prevail. And recapping the main stories for tonight, health protection measures remain, warns Minister. Fijians show joy at elimination of COVID-19 cases and fire leaves four families homeless. 
Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, is it a good time to invest in real estate? Visit our FBC website to answer. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us on our Facebook page, FBC News. And you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, stay safe. Good night.